Right, welcome back to 12th Man, guys. The regular Thursday night roadshow on 7.30 every Thursday night. Tonight we'll be looking ahead to Portsmouth vs Ipswich at Fratton Park this Saturday, 3pm. But in the meantime, I must, make, uh, I must make you aware, we are now in the lead up to Christmas and New Year's. So our next episode is the 9th of January after today. I think it's the 9th of January. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be doing it every Thursday, but we just can't get around to it, can we? Um too many games this, uh, this Christmas period, but today marks our 500th day as a channel, That's 16 months after we start, started out by myself, now joined by a family of supporters who produce content on a weekly basis. Just under 7,000 social media uh, followers across all pages, so thanks for your support. Please continue to support, make sure you subscribe where you can, and follow our channels, all the details are below. Right, so where are we tonight? On to the formalities. Tonight we're here in the Halbert Inn in Ipswich, formerly known as PJ McGuinness, uh, for anyone familiar with the pub, under new management since the back end of last year. And to be honest, the transformation is amazing. It's, uh, it's definitely more homely than it, than it used to be. Been, been a drunk a few, few times in here, Dan. Definitely, I know. Just a few. And uh, yeah, warm and welcome location for... Um, for our uh, Christmas special, which is today. It's not going to be very special, but uh, we've got questions from you and Christmas wishes from you guys, so listen out for those during the uh, during the episode. But this not, uh, brings me nicely on to tonight's guest. So we've gone all out tonight. We've got all the big guns in. Uh, <laughs> all the big guns. <laughs> so tonight, we've got the 12th man himself, Mark Beck. He's sitting there right beside me. We've got a fan zone regular and disqualified driver, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Resident Star Wars expert and armchair warmer Dan. <laughs> Fan blockbuster, new blockbuster owner as well. Yeah, and blockbuster right. owner, yeah. Uh, Fan zone photographer and hothead Mike, huh. obviously sitting there. And Glory Days artwork creator Brad, who's sitting opposite me here. <laughs> well, welcome back, CD guys. Crew. Firstly, anyway. So, secondly, you know, it's about time we change the format of the show. So, we're bringing you guys your questions in and your, you know, your ideas so that we can make it more you know interactive with you so um, we have got the cards we'll look at the cards in a minute um, we've got two parts we've got one of Christmas wishes because obviously Christmas is coming up next week and we've got <laughs> yeah, there's, more, there's, there's more Christmas wishes than our questions I'm a bit worried the community chest in chance cards yeah yeah well it could be anything mate um, there's a, a few astounding ones in there I will say um, but we've got some random points to talk about in there. Um, however, we must be mindful of time, boys. So let's watch that time tonight. Don't want to go over. So let's start at Bristol Rovers. Um, I mean, they're on telly as we speak, actually, funny enough. Just lost their manager, Graham, Graham Coughlin's left. Obviously, we spoke to the Bristol Rovers fans after the game on Saturday, but they didn't anticipate that at all, did they? No, not at all. Um, clearly, the draw of beating Ipswich is the peak of his achievements in his career, and he thought, well, fuck this, can't get any better, boys. I might as well leave now. <laughs> He's cashing in on it. Cashing in on it, you know, leaving a high. But um, no, a bit weird, really. I don't really know what's going on there. Um, in terms of the game, when we saw the lineups, no Johnson, Clark, Harris was a bit like, oh, what's going on here? Like, no mention of an injury. Um, yeah. I don't know whether there's some. Uh, Screaming problems, weren't yeah, it, really? Yeah, I don't know whether there's something going on there. Maybe maybe that's factored into why. Is it Graham Coughlin? I don't I feel bad because I didn't know who, who he was. Well, I didn't, mate, to be honest. And when they mentioned his name, I thought, last, last is he the, the second common of Messiah? I've never heard of him yeah, before. The last manager I knew they had was Daryl Clark and mm. with Marcus Stewart as their assistant. Mm. But obviously that obviously went... Wrong. And it talks to Daryl Clark actually coming back and, and managing, really? yeah, apparently. But yeah, um, as for the game, I think we're all a bit baffled. You know, I think we weren't particularly happy no. after the game. Um I let my emotions get the better of me. I actually got ripped to shit. I say you were given a rather a Mike yeah. Mike kind of approach to the game he afterwards. Yeah. He was shaken, weren't he? Yeah. But do you want to just t tell everyone what you thought about um, Mark's reaction after the game? Uh, he'd gone full ball ball nonce and lost his suede. <laughs> <laughs> Not very often that happens. They happen very often, but no, it's just frustrating. Um, don't really know what that system was. Three, I don't know any formation that plays three out and out strikers and cold scoops at right back, which is. Ever been a good and he idea. got in team of the week as well. And Kane, yeah. and Kane Jack, but I mean, I Kane think Jackson incredible. I think uh, he was the one that stood out for me. 
Yeah, um, three, yeah, definitely. He, he had the best game out of them. And, um, I mean, some of the balls Scoose was playing in the first half down there, Jackson couldn't have done any, anything with. No. Um, no, I, I agree with you there. They were disastrous at times. I mean, Jack, Jackson was checking his run quite a lot, and we all know that's what he does. Yeah. Um, and Scoose somehow just was wasn't even on the same page as in a completely different book mm. he's not a right back is he no. no Brad did you go to game on Saturday I did yeah what did you make of it mate um, I thought we was a bit unlucky really um, I certainly think we've uh, played better than that worse than that this season and won yeah. and um, we had our chances we didn't take ours they did they took theirs I think after you go 2-0 down you're always that's always going to be a, a, a big it's mountain. Be a tough hill. Climb. Yeah, tough hill to climb, isn't it? And and espe- like you said, Day, especially we were. If you hadn't looked at the scoreboard, you would have said we'd have been better, and wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, we. I suppose once you go two 0 up, you're you are going to sit back a little bit, and the other team are going to do more of the play. But that was just um, the goals that we conceded. A little bit soft, you know. You couldn't really sort of pinpoint the blame on anyone in particular, but we were just shell shocked, weren't we? Do you think? Day, yeah, I think it was just um, they got that go- they got that goal with their f- first shot in yeah. fourth minute or something like that. I think that and actually pounded the net, didn't it? Like it, it shocked yeah, everybody. It finish, it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was that was a <coughs> confident shot, just bang straight in the net. Let's you know, let's crack on. But they were all the players yeah. as soon as they scored that, they were jumping around in front of their fans like they've won a cup. Mm. And this is where the reference yeah, came: good. your cup final at the end of the game. It wasn't because we feel like we're a cup final, but they were acting like no, it was. Let's face it, right? Their plan was to come and get a point at least. Yeah. yeah? Mm. They didn't want to get beaten. No. They've come here, got a lead in the fourth minute, and it, no wonder they celebrated so much because their plan was going perfectly. Yeah. I mean, and then the second went in, that was it. They were just like, right, uh, we yeah. can take our foot off the gas. We can just waste a bit of time here. We can frustrate these guys and see if we can sail out and hold on to hold on to this lead. Mm. And they did really well to do we that. We did have honest. our chances to get back in. Oh, though, God, I did. Yeah. Nor- Norwood missed a sitter and there was a few... I thought Norwood looked Norwood really had a header and Nolan had a really header dangerous. that he could maybe have took another touch on. And oh, no. oh, but no. Too realistically, just before you say that, I think that's the most chances we've made in the game this season. For a long while, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was going to say. I remember saying to you, I think it was in between the first and second goal. We're going to have these on toast because yeah. we were literally all over them, come down both sides, yeah. chucking the ball in the box. And I mean, well, they were burnt on both sides by the end of we half, so, weren't they? We were so, I mean, we were so close. And um, I mean, if we bagged one of those chances, I think it could have been a completely different game. Yeah, absolutely right, Dan. From your perspective, then yeah, didn't go the on from the armchair. Was it comfortable? I, Pipe and slippers, it was really comfortable. And, bother. and the bovril. I did have one for you, mate. Um, I was I managed to watch in some dodgy site and we looked dangerous at times. Yeah. Um, the goals were soft, like Brad said, they're soft. One from a throw in, one from poor possession. Um, Norwood, yeah, it did look dangerous, but there was one chance there was easier to score. Mm. <laughs> How he missed that, I don't know. Well, he has missed a number of cities this yeah, season, hasn't he? But he up. seems to score the harder ones and the easier ones. I mean, his finish for the, his his goal, yeah, really well taken, power, really well taken. It was a beautiful move. Incredible but I don't. If there was anyone else, like if there was Jackson, when it got on to the end of that, he burst a gut to get in there. Norwood got, scored a very similar goal to that already this season. I I, I can't yeah. remember who it was against, but uh, um, oh Wimbledon, yeah, Wimbledon, yeah. In that game, he yeah. scored. He scored the one to get to uh, Pegasus back. I think one thing that we lost in that defeat yeah. is that goal. Yeah. Our goal. That yeah, that was, was, that was a hell of that was a hell of a goal. Weren't but it? we had we've had this season we've been like that. We've had some excellent build up play. And um, sometimes we've scored, <clears throat> more times than not, we haven't scored. Mm. Um, but um, it proves they can do it. Though. Yeah, I think we, we missed the leader. A leader, yeah. leader was Chambers. I think we said that oh, after the game. Chamber, we missed we it missed big time. That communication and things like that. You know, with some of those two goals have happened if Chambers on the pitch. Who knows? We don't, don't know. But. More than likely. Well, yeah, <laughs> quite possibly. <Sunderland. laughs> yeah, Sunderland. Um, no, enough, take enough away from Chambers, but we miss him. Th- there's another things. Yeah, we do miss him. We miss that leadership. Um, that goal, the wouldn't have looked out of place in the Premier League, and if it happened in the Premier League, Jesus Christ, I've been talking about it for weeks. Um, but we, we've missed it. Everyone's missed it because we're not winning games, and that, that's putting us in a certain position now this season, which we need to get away from. Boys, let's, let's pick a card. Let's take a Christmas wish and a question. Um, two randomers take one each so let's take a Christmas wish first before we go into the question go on in. Oliver Easton says happy Christmas guys let's 
win on Saturday come on you blues right, lovely cheers Oliver thanks for that mate alright go for it with a question let's have Dan have a question mate go for it Emma Tingley on Instagram says where does Lambert need to spend money in January and who would you like him to bring in Emma Tingley Midfielder. <coughs> creative midfielder, creative midfielder, but we've already got us. we've already got one um, coming in, as far as I'm aware. We must have yeah, the biggest squad in the league. I, I shouldn't re- listen. I shouldn't really be saying this. I do know that a player is already signed and already through the door. Is that, is that yeah. Brown? Is that Brown or Ketchup? It's um, Ketchup, mate. Okay. Yeah, but it's absolute Ketchup. Um, Daddy sauce. Daddy sauce. It was broken um, towards the arse end of the summer um, for whatever reason, and um, the players playing championship football. Um, He's a local lad, and um, he will be signed on dot line for Ipswich in January. That's all I can say about getting in trouble. Um, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, be on Instagram afterwards. I'll be on Instagram afterwards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but don't you think? Don't you think we need to actually get a few out? Probably. I mean, I know we've got oh, we're out. Yeah. we've only got <laughs> one cup left. Let's go to Andy. Zell. Andy's popular with the Deadwood. Andy, who, who, who are we getting, getting rid of this January? Dezel, the only reason he's planned, get him in the shop window. That's yeah, my view. Gross. He's not planned well at all. Why is Lambert sexing up Dezel? I mean, thanks, e- thanks Emma firstly for the question because the sport is onto this. It's a bit too obvious. It's too obvious. He's trying, to, he's trying to get him game time, get him out there and yeah. tr- cash yeah, in on him af- after the interest <laughs> that we all knew about at the start of the season. Mm. If they didn't play him, what would his value be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was f- meant to be five million around that mark. Okay. was rumoured. Bef- on the on the season we went down. It's something that if Lou he's not playing, it's going to be what bat tight. Something like that Lou always yeah, says. Something that Lou always says. He's got great potential. <coughs> how, how many years for four years? He broke in at sixteen years and whatever fifty days, whatever when he scored that goal. Um, I, I'd still keep and he hasn't done it. He's only twenty. He's still only twenty, though, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. I personally, got don't, point, there's not many players in the team that can actually thread a ball through no, no, defenders. Not. And that's what we've been missing. Certain players do have the gift. Certain players do have the gift, which he does have. But yeah. the opportunities don't come along as quick as so. we want them to. Like, he, he divides opinion massively. Yeah. And for me, he, for the sake of, like Mike's saying, he, he's got a rare talent to be able to thread a pass. For the sake of doing two, three passes a game, we can't afford to carry him in a game. Yeah, well, he's not even done that. He has been in a midfield that basically has had a poor defence behind because we've been playing cup game after cup game after cup game, trying out new new players, giving giving out um, caps to people and everything else. Yeah. It, I've got to argue, Mike. How long can we wait for a good defence and have him still in a midfield? We know well, that if Ch- when Chambers comes back, we've got one player that is solid. You put Wolfie next to him. We get KV Young back. And then we've got Garbutt on one side. That's a good defence. Yeah, but they're all in, they're all in the same position. But and we're still and they're still playing well. And we're still having stand up players. And Dazelle's not one of them. He's not had a running a decent run in the side though, has he? He's sort of he's played and then he's and that's he's, what he's, bothers me. He's sporadic, he isn't he? And then the team is a different team, yeah. a different mm. formation. You yeah. know, I'd like to see him mm. sort of given sort there's, there's of ten th- games. And for me, I think his his time's gone. As much as mm. he's people still seem to, you know, he's had. I, I don't know. He's not had a run in the team, but you've you could got. Say a, that also about Judge. Yeah, but you've yeah. got yeah, you've yeah, got yeah, you've yeah, got yeah, same yeah. opportunities. There's and two, there's two players yeah. in this team who need to play more because they're. I think his contract may be up soon. Dob Dobra's got to play more. Scored yesterday. And El mazzini has got to play. All more. right. Look yeah. for me personally, and go back to Emma's question. Um, you've got to look at value in players. We're overcrowded midfield, and I think it's limiting our options when we are playing games. Hughes, yeah, Dizel yeah. and Judge Hughes are three players that, that need to yeah. either play up or move on in my opinion and we can make money out of them yeah. still um, and we only need to bring in maybe one possibly got, two in that area to, to push got, us up we've got to be smart because people a lot of play, a lot of our fans are frustrated about the rotation and yeah. I'd agree there's some players that really don't need first team minutes I, I said my bit about Georgie on Saturday but he might as well go back. Yeah, it can take his one. Oh, yeah, you've seen, I'll be you've surprised if he makes the past January. What song is that? Worth hundred million. He's fucking eight. <laughs> we still got Teddy to come back. Still yeah. got Teddy. I mean, and Teddy Bishop just looks like he's coming back to the first team fold quicker than we thought. I mean, Tuesday night, I was thinking we need a we need a midfielder who's willing to run mm. at players rather than passing it sideways and things like that. And mm. Teddy's that player for me. Yeah, definitely. Hundred percent agree. We can't stand these all night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But let us know in the comments what you think about um, Andre Dezel. Um, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, obviously a big question. Aston Villa 2-0 up against Liverpool already. 
Yeah, sorry, we're, we're, we're filming this on a Tuesday night um, <laughs> rather than a Thursday night, but <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, and they'll be pissed because uh, be Aston Villa won't wouldn't, we have won this Carlton Cup. Sorry, yeah, yeah, exactly. If they weren't if they weren't playing in the Club World Cup, then they would have won this game, yeah. wouldn't they? And yeah. Bolton would have won as well. Let's have a look at the headlines, quick boys. I'll just go through them really quickly because we could talk about things all night. Here. So, um, I'll go through six headlines that uh, five that I picked up. Uh, Sears, I'm ready to go, ready for action. Town announced 3.2 million pound loss. Liam Gibbs signs first pro deal. Exit a cup date, move to a Saturday, and Scoos. We are going through a blip, and we are not hiding from it. So, does anyone want to pick up on one of them quickly? Should we start with the loss? The 3.2 million loss? That's nothing there. To me, that's not a loss. I think that's brilliant, given that we got relegated. It's, it's coming up, well, look, the, the, the debt. Yeah, but how many people have lost their jobs because of that? Yeah. No people have lost their jobs because of that. Something Simon Milton wasn't afraid of talking about. Yeah. You were there that night, weren't you, mate? That debt goes on to the 90-odd million that's yeah. owed to Marcus. 96 now, Marcus. It's... That's money that's offset on his company that's worth of what, 800 million. Right? So he pays less, if, if anything, he doesn't pay any tax. I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised if he'd be paying 3 million in tax if, if, it won't, if he didn't have that debt. Yeah. So it's, it's like balances the books for him at the end of the day. Yeah. He has put money in in the past. He put 20 million in when Keane was here, which yeah. was uh, totally wasted on, on, a, on that guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's had his fingers burned. Oh. <clears throat> but now that debt, if he sells a club, the debt doesn't go with it, no. apparently, is what I've heard. Because at the end no of the day, one, that no debt... No one would buy it with all that debt. No, no they wouldn't, they wouldn't. Ideas, but yeah. that debt is serving a purpose at the moment for him. Yeah, it does. And, it, and it's I serving him money. Evans has come a long way as an owner, I think. A lot of people will still cr- criticise him that he's not spending. But money isn't the answer. And I think now we're seeing a coach who actually... He's got the right coach in now who's actually connected the fans and the club again. Yeah. The amount of youth we're seeing coming through, you know... Uh, it was my dream to see someone like like Wolfenden and, and Downs to come into the team yeah. and absolutely cement themselves as probably arguably you know if they're going to be in every team sheet this yeah. season. It's not really as possible. Evans doing that though, is it? That's, that's well, Lambert yeah. doing yeah. Lambert yeah. doing that. It is though. Who got Lambert in? That's yeah, every, but everyone everyone you was could, you, could, you could argue that in the time that Evans has been here, those players have come to fruition. I mean, Downs was seven years old when when he joined this club. And I mean, he's been here for what, 11, 12? That's part of the five point plan. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm <laughs> every point, come on, what points? A five point remember. joke, you mean? The five point joke that never came through. You've got to give it him credit where it's due. A yeah. lot of it, you know, it would be quite easy for, you know, you could get Sheikh Allah, whoever, in, and he could spend 60 odd million. I'd rather have that, a bit more exciting, isn't it? And it make. Sheikh Allah. Well, I don't know, whoever. <laughs> But like you could get, you could get, you could get, though, you could get them in, and you know, there's no guarantees we'll be any better off. No. There's no guarantees. No, no, no. So yeah, it, right. you, you know, just that hundred million kit well. we could I use. Mean, yeah. There's only a few clubs out there, yeah, like Leeds and that, that actually make money. Yeah. And one of the reasons is probably because the tickets are like forty-two pound each, yeah. and, and, and and the fan base. The fan base at the them. end of the day. And it, I'd, I'd argue, I'd argue the, the toss out of this: find a club that are as, as equally as big as Ipswich Town, or got more fans than Ipswich Town. We've got in and around League One, apart from Sunderland. Nationwide. Nationwide, you're we've right. We've got a lot of fans, and that's due to our success in the seventies, eighties. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's that's as simple just, as that. It's I just think Evans has been a football club owner for eleven years. years what, ten, yeah. eleven years? Yeah. And he doesn't really seem to. Be no. learning okay. and, and progressing. In no, his, I mean, no, when no. he took over, we were what? A, a, a just come down from a Premier League, a top six Championship side, mm. and we've just steadily gone down that's, and down. That's what and he down threw. That's down. what he really threw the money at it. I really struggled to understand why he bought the club. I, sh- well, I, it, I can understand. It's worth look. It's it's image. I think he's done so. He got him to sound on the cheap, and I'll be brutally honest. Come image on. he's put Marcus Evans on the front of that shirt and his his actual intake has gone up by 700 percent since now, he bought it switch down yeah so we're going up we've been in the Premier League yeah and when we did come down we were a top six certain side yeah every season yeah right? and that's and been under his why ownership he that, that decline is took this club is because same. the Peter the Peter owner um he, he bought them for um one pound and um, I saw something last night that they're now value the club is currently valued at like thirty million. 
Yeah. yeah, but he makes but money off of guys, just just sitting in League One, doing nothing and selling players each season. The Bury owner bought his club for a pound, and look where they are. It's. I'd it's, say be careful what you wish for. Oh, 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 oh for on, fuck's sake! On. There's always one, isn't there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one. Liam Gibbs signed his first pro deal. Um, attacker. I think saw him briefly at Colchester. Didn't touch the ball, so I can't really say much about him. He's good then. Scoose, we're going for a blip. Um, I agree with Scoose, um, but we need to come out of this split. Um, a lot of teams this season have gone 10 unbeaten, not gone 11. Um, and one of those we're going to be playing this Saturday. Um, the other one with Sears, I'm ready to go, I'm ready for action. Is he ready for first team football this Saturday? No. Quickly. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 Who are we talking about? Sears. Freddie Sears. Freddie Sears. Mm, no, I don't think so. Cameo, five minutes, good one. It's, it's Maybe, yeah. Maybe a couple of minutes yeah. at the end. It's all set up for New Year's Day. It's all set up. Well, you know I'd say I'll one be, thing. Ben know, Morris is um, Ben Morris is going up in the under twenty threes in the shadow of Freddie Sears. Um, we talk about players in positions coming through the academy. Strike is a big one for us. Last one that came through was obviously um, Jack Marriott. Never really got his chance. We've got to give Ben Morris a chance up front, surely. Or, or Falami. Yeah. I knew we were going to say that. Uh, Tyree Simpson, K. K. Brown. There's options there. They deserve a chance. As is he the next in succession though? Is it him or Falami? Come on. I'd say Falami. I know Morris has gone out and had league minutes at Forest Green. I'd say um, Falami. I'd say Falami, maybe just... We've got Drinan coming back. Oh, look who it is. Oh, Whitby's just turned up. Yeah, get a chair down the back, mate. Um, Drinan. I know Drinan's just come back as well. Drinan's come I thought we got rid of Drinan. No, he's, he's coming back. See, he's back, a forgotten man. I, I doubt, look, we shouldn't be talking about strikers, but I think we need to bring someone in who's in the shadows who could actually you know maybe give us something to think about Jack Lancaster is he's, he's yeah. The, yeah there's talk of him maybe being back yeah. Steven, Steven reckons that he's yeah. you know it could be coming back sooner rather than later he's been told to stay off the golf golf course yeah no more golf Jack please mate but um right let's have another one let's have a that's a Christmas wish and a question so Mike let's give, have a Christmas wish from you Sorry, mate no. Christmas wish Anonymous says, spare a thought for those living in your shadow this Christmas. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> I don't know where that come from. <laughs> and question from... Grab yourself a coat. Where can you get, where'd you get your coat you from? These no in, idea, mate. Oh, these I in. bought it about two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself a coat because it's cold in the shadows. Yeah, definitely cold in the shadows. Give us a question then, Mark. Come on. A black puff coat. <laughs> Callum Brissett, Brissett. Yeah. Can the creator of um, the uh, alternative, alternative commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I did slate you. Uh, can you name any Christmas-themed town players off the top of your head? Ooh. Any Christmas-themed town players off the top of your head? Go on. I'll start. Oh, no, you nicked it from me. I was going to say that. These. No, you can't do this. No, I haven't seen any. I've, no, like, the only one I can think of is Holy walk. Night, like O. Thomas Holy Night. <laughs> walking in a walk, walk, walking in a walky wonderland. Yeah, go on. Then. Any more? Anymore for anymore? Jason Snowcroft. James oh, Snowcroft. Oh, James Snowcroft. Yeah. James Snowcroft. That's a good one. Any else? Nothing. Got nothing left. Nothing. No, I don't think you did. Nothing in the bag. Can we see Whitby in the background there? Wave, Tom. Stand up, mate. <laughs> he always turns up in the end. Um, right, boys. Let's get on to Brad. Brad's glory days artwork, mate. Um, I've seen some of his stuff. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, Obviously, you've got some great stuff. So Mark's right. going to get some of the stuff to bring it close to the camera so everyone can see. But just talk to us about Glory Day's artwork and, and where you're going with it at the moment. Um, yeah, it was just a, a little hobby that I started up about five months ago. Just uh, drawing a few footballers and on my iPad and posted them up online. And Paul Lambert's bought a couple. Yeah. Kane Vincent Young's bought a couple. Caden Jackson's bought one. And yes, yeah, just now doing t shirts, coasters, art prints. I love that uh, honey badger. That honey badger must be fun. Uh, how many of those have you sold so far? I've sold nearly ten of those. See, that's decent. Then we we, we should be selling more than that. I've only had them a week. Yeah. So. And what, look, basically, you said Facebook, wasn't it? That most people can. Facebook and Twitter. It's going to be at least fifteen because we're all getting one definitely after this. But um, mate, look, I think your stuff's quality, but. Tell us about why you started your hobby, why you started drawing, why did you do this? 
I've always been interested in drawing, even as a as a kid. You know, yeah. I can remember sort of sitting at me nana's table drawing war yeah. scenes and mm. armies, and done well at school with art, but then just never never went any further with it really. And yeah. then um, had been thinking that I needed a new hobby, and I tried a few things, and nothing was really lighting that yeah. fire inside. And then. Yeah, I just just got stuck into that, and I, I don't really know why I started doing it again. To yeah. be honest, it just it just sort of happened, and it's just yeah, I'm not sure where it's going. Yeah, we've only been doing it for but five that's months. That's the thing that's exciting, mate. That's yeah. the thing that's I, I mean, remember when I started this, I, I thought it was crazy, but yeah. obviously it turned out to be completely sane and all these lot of crazy. Yeah, so but um, just goes to show. That, yeah, it you know, does work, mate, and it definitely it's definitely the start of something new. So, firstly, Glory Days artwork. If you're not following them already, you can follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. They've got some great stuff out. Have a look at their merchandise coming out at the moment. But there's definitely more things to come, isn't there? I'm doing some work for the club at the moment, for yeah. the Junior Blues. And mm. um, got some stuff going up in the stadium. So, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully I can do some work, not just for Ipswich, but for, for other clubs maybe, you know. And yeah, we'll, we'll, definitely. We'll I'm sure there's a mark out there. And it, it, if you don't mind me saying, it's, it's, it looks more like, you know, that that imagery of a f- forgotten past that, that's not really associated with yeah, modern day football, I mean, wouldn't you say? The, this this style is very much heavily influenced by um, like the old sort of yeah. 70s Roy of the Rovers comics. Which you the newspaper kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and um, that's like when I was a kid, I can remember that excitement of getting a comic book and, and you know, and opening it and seeing it. And I think that's something that's sort of lost in the digital age, yeah. if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, I'm... And you're right. And there's not many in the modern day world. Not many people open up a magazine or a newspaper. That's right. Um, yeah. Not yeah. saying that we're going to see them in a m- uh, magazine or newspaper. If you can get them out on social media, people are going to connect with them just the same way as exactly. Yeah. You know, others did in the past. Yeah. Hope anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's really good. Boys, what do you make of make of Glory Days artwork? Yeah, it reminds me a bit of um, the old Match of Day annuals you used to get on Christmas. Um, yeah. Open up, seeing something like that. It's yeah, good. the likeness is brilliant in some of them, isn't it? Like, oh, I mean yeah. that Paul Lambert yeah, one. Like, I mean the expression. All the players, shoot the... magazine type of look. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, they, you've got the um, comic comic yeah. books. Sort of yeah, yeah, go show, it, show it to the really camera. That. Thing, that. What really was that good thing, good thing that. called in the sun? It looks like that. Page three. Page three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only read it for the articles, mate. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's quality stuff. And you say you've had purchases from. Um, uh, Lambert Jackson came Vincent Young. Yeah. I mean, I've seen you with up in Paul Lambert's house. Apparently, he's um his wife's a big fan, and yeah. I'm told he is too. So that's quality. And I noticed you've done. I, I mean, I saw you at the Kawam your night. So you've done one for him. He was pretty tough yeah. for that picture, wasn't he? Yeah. I saw you with Terry Butcher yeah. this weekend. Did he like that one? Did he? He did. Yeah. He, he didn't seem as pleased as what Chris Kiwami was when I gave him <laughs> no. when I gave him his one. But um, Terry's a. I mean, that's he's an England international, so um, he's yeah, probably had a few yeah, he's probably had a few in the pictures past, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, mate, that's quality. If we can get some more followers for you today, at least just follow Glory Day's artwork, and there's yeah, more, don't, definitely don't more to come. Subscribe to us, follow him. And also subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> the quality's excellent. The quality is You're impeccable. Print quality is impeccable. Absolutely impeccable. Yeah. And I don't think you'll find it anywhere. I think you do really well, mate. I think you do really well with how you do it. Like you say, iPad was it that you started at oh, Alpha? iPad, yeah, and it's, um, they then sent off the professionals to be printed off in HD, and that's like proper art, yeah, art, art print art card, paper, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not just a like a post. So the prints are available as well to purchase, are they? Yeah, they're all available to buy. I've, you go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do you take requests. I do do requests. Players. Yeah, I charge a bit more for commissioned work, but I've had co- uh, requests for lots of players. How much would it be I, for this? <laughs> Fiver, <and> tenner. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, look at him. <laughs> love you, Whitby. Love you. <laughs> mm. Anyway, let's move on. Whitby, I think you're you're feeling a bit um brave. by yourself over there. Brave, yeah, oh, always brave. But do you want to do you want to um do you want to pull out one of the Christmas wishes, mate? I'll give you the next one on the pile. There you go. Do you want to read that out to everyone? Katie says, "Happy Christmas, guys! I hope you have a lovely time." Oh, that's oh, I love Katie. You, Katie. Katie Wick- Wicker Morgan, as far as I'm aware. And does somebody want to read the next one? The next question. Go for it. Uh, Will Airy on Instagram says, "What is your greatest source of optimism for the rest of the season?" 
What a question. What a question. The fact, uh, the fact we're second and we're planned so poorly. It's got to yeah, be. That's a good shout. It, that, that's got to be a reason for optimism. <laughs> that we are still sitting in second after not winning not winning in so long. I don't know how Wouldn't you agree? Second. Yeah, plenty of players to come back as well. Uh, like we said, Sears and Bishop already, Lancaster. Um, even not players to come back, but more players to get more minutes. Yeah. Uh, I keep banging on about it. I will do until he gets more minutes. Until Dobber gets more minutes. I might even get start a petition. Change.org, I'm going to start a petition. Get Dobber more minutes. Get a debate in Parliament, I want, yeah. Actually, yeah. I want, Let's have a little debate. Anyone that's watching tonight, can we just go over Dobra? How do you feel about Dobra coming into the starting 11? Um, because he does deserve it. He does um, deserve and he, it. he does more for me in, in you know, five minutes than what but Judge will do in 90. He's but, fearless, isn't he? Yeah. Is he a player that should be starting, really? But or is he more an impact player? We, we don't know. We don't know that yet. We don't know. We're not given that chance. Yeah. And, and you know, certainly when he di- does get ninety minutes, he always delivers. I mean, if you look at it, well, if he gets ninety minutes, we know that he starts. We yeah. know I'm talking minutes. about I'm talking about the bloody League Cup or whatever it is the EFL well, Cup. Is it going back to that question? The, my greatest source of optimism is our away form. Yeah. yeah. Because I feel that when we're on the road. We go all out and teams are not parking the bus, so to speak, yeah. playing for a draw. They're, they're actually playing for the win and we, we, we're, taking, you know, we're taking points off these guys. And I think if we play like we did against Bristol Rovers after they'd scored two goals, obviously, yeah. where we had that fight and determination, we was attack, 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 yeah. right? And we continue away. I think we're going to be... I want, to see that fight. Win. I want to see that fight more. I want to see what we saw against Bristol Rovers. I, was absolute, I don't think anyone walked away and said we played poorly because I don't think we no, did. We didn't. No, I don't think we did. Um, it was. I'll keep going back to it, but it's the system. That's the, until we nail a system that we want to four play. Four five two, isn't it? What's I, your favourite? Yeah. No, four, four five one, four, three five two, four four, four two. Three, one. I don't care what it is. You, can, <laughs> you know, as long as we. You know, a lot is made about the rotation. The rotation for me isn't the problem. It's having us mm. playing different formations each week. Yeah. If you play, you can have the same formation. Oh, and the police is just turn up. Whitby, back door, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you can play this. You know, you can play this. Been nonsense. You keep rotating in the same formation because you can. If you're playing the same formation, you're likely to keep at least a spine of a team, yeah. which I've said again, we've been going on about. Um, and then you rotate around it, players who are informed, players who can, you know, horses for courses, who's going to be better for the opposition. You know, this is when players will get opportunities. But yeah. for me, until we nail the system, that, that's okay, this probably being pessimist. What do you think that is then? Because, I mean, you know, Paul Lambert's an experienced footballer. He's an experienced manager. He must. Oh, oh I'll just stop you there, right. I, <laughs> I'm partial to looking back a few years to try and find out why these, these things come up. Lambert was had an interview five years ago after um, he left Aston Villa, I think it was, um, and it, it was to do with why he was tinkering with his starting eleven, and it just seemed a bit because at the time Villa Deja weren't playing vu. deja vu. Yeah. Villa weren't playing too bad, and they were playing quite some good football under mm. Lambert, even though they're always relegation favourites. Yeah. Um, and his answer was simply, he was tinkering because he wanted to get a result. It's simple as that. Yeah. And I think it's it's got to that desperation point where he's trying to find that mixture that will get a result. The winning formula. Yeah, the winning so, formula. Sometimes, like you'll have a winning formula, or maybe then he will think, oh, we've had times we've won games, and then he's changed it, and then we've gone to have a, you know, I, t- I take what Brad is saying. You know, he's an experienced football manager. That doesn't mean he's right. Yeah. You know, just because he just because he's won stuff doesn't mean he's right. Sounds like you want his job. Well. I'm, I'm open, Marcus. I'm a big fan. I've been big jobs. No, I was going to say, I think, you know, we'll be dangerous once we actually know what our start, first starting lot 11 is and formation as well. Right. I think that's my cause for optimism. Back to the start of the season. Yeah, we, Tom's right. It shouldn't take more than 20 games. But look no, look back to what we were forced to do at the start of the season with the lineup we had. And the first nine games, we were unbeaten. And that starting lineup barely changed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely barely changed. Lot, Why not go back to how we, we started? Well. And we weren't playing well. You're we right. We really weren't. And this is where the. It looks like we're capitulating, but we're not actually doing that. I said that on Saturday. I didn't really mean it. Um, we're not capitulating because we've not played well this season, in my opinion. I don't think we've outplayed so anyone. The first nine games, you say? Yeah. So what top six club now will we play in the first nine games? Peterborough. Sunderland? Just Peterborough. But it's Sunderland out there, aren't they? Don, with Doncaster yeah. in the first nine? Doncaster, yeah. Who, who out are they? Oxford? Fleetwood. Um, Fleetwood. 
beat me. Are they in the top six still? I don't know. I don't know. Ox, Oxford, Oxford, Oxford. I only look up in this league. I don't look down. Peterborough, Wickham. All I'm worried about is Wickham. We should have beaten them that night, and well, absolutely we frustrated about that referee. Uh, we, <laughs> we know, we know what you even, you thought about that referee. <laughs> even when we was on our unbeaten run, yeah, top of the league, saying hundred points, hundred goals, all that malarkey, I still feel <laughs> that we had a good five or six defeats in us. Yeah, right. How many have we had? Three in the league so far. Yeah, and we're nearly halfway there. We forget where we are. I think as a team. What we don't want is what Sunderland did last year, is to be drawing too many games. Yeah. That's the only thing. You're right. Oh, I don't want to be a Sunderland. Um, I'll just go to a few more of the Christmas uh, messages. Oscar Christian says, tell Troy he's a go N. Oh, right. goes saying, yeah, it goes, goes without saying. Goats without saying that one. And oh, Ben Moore has said, Merry Christmas to Ash, Tom, Andy and Mark. Sorry, Lou. Sorry, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, for, sorry, everybody else. You know, yeah, everyone else that's involved. I got a nice message for once. <laughs> yeah, Tom actually got included. That makes a change. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's just have a look at these last two questions that we've got here. Oh, you didn't bring mine. No, yours was a bit too late, mate. I like entries for in the first hour. Um, blah, 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 how many reinforcements? Sorry, Jack, but we've already answered that question. Really, um, Daniel K has put. You know, quite a generic question, but we'll answer it because it's Christmas. Who is your favourite player of all time? You must have witnessed them. Let's go over it. Start round the table. Let's go clockwise. Pelé, Pont Road. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Kikuchi. The original fly, flying fan. You know, not, you, not the B-Tech Kikuchi down no, the road, yeah? No, not, not that fucking idiot down the road. <laughs> <laughs> He's broke his toe, so Merry Christmas. Mm. So, yeah. Matt Holland's all day long. Matt Holland. Whitby, you, get, you can have an entry, mate. Don't you dare say Toto. Oh, I wasn't going to say Toto. <laughs> You're banned from mentioning Toto Enciala on this channel. Oh, I can't mention him now. No, my favourite player is Tommy Smith. Tommy I love Smith. Tommy Smith, yeah. Wait, the new one or the old one? The new one, I'll say. New one, oh, yeah. Oh, 100% new one. Yeah. 100% winning record. Or Frank Gold Brad. Chris Kiwamia. Chris Kiwamia. Yeah, you met him a few yeah, weeks ago, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, and Mike, go on, mate. Flatter us. Have to be John Watt. Yeah. John Watt. Yeah. Yeah. Good choice. My, mine, you ask. It would be Romeo's Me, you ask. Undervan. Romeo's Zondervan. Romeo's Zondervan was the first one I very, had. Very back influential back. as a player. Can can I, brilliant. Can I do Dutch master. Can I do Romeo's Zondervan. Yeah. Go on then. Pablo Canago. That's a good one. And um, for me, I, I like a player who's got an all round quality, who's someone who could deliver. Um, yeah. s similar era to you. Tommy Miller was absolutely yeah. sensational. Yeah. I thought it was incredible, and my time. and he was and and like you say yeah. with Matt Holland, very much a, a successor to Matt Holland in a way. And I thought he should have led Ipswich Town personally. Um, but yeah, like you say, great penalty taker, never missed a penalty. D. Absolutely incredible, uh, all the way from Europe all the way through to the Championship playoff final. Uh, championship playoffs, we never made a final. <laughs> Don't remind me. Sorry, what is this? Oh yeah, well we never Fast I time. never did, alright? I was eight when we made a playoff final. Anyway, <clears throat> boys, we need to get on to Saturday. We've got how long have we got? We've got our ten minutes maximum. Saturday we've got Pompey. And yeah. um I tell you what, they're in good form. They are in good yeah. form. But let me finish what I'm gonna say. Kenny Jacket, current manager, currently sitting tenth in League One after a poor start on this this season, they've fought back. However, Form was picked up of late, going 10 games unbeaten until they got battered by Accrington 4 1 this weekend. Embarrassing result, so, if you ask me. Go, yeah. Yeah. No, you know, you know. <laughs> 1 0, that's all it was. 2 0? Oh, fuck's that sake. roof. Lack of roof. That Red Bishop. Down. That's that Bishop, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nice guy. Great guy. Um, two former ITFC men in the front line with obviously Harrison. Pittman? Harrison up front, four goals this Pittman season. Goal. Brett Pittman. Up front, two goals this season. But they're supported by John Marquis, who scored four as well. But they're not the outstanding performers. Their outstanding performer is Ronan Curtis this season with seven goals from midfield. Um, a player they signed from Derry City over a year ago. Scored 11 last season, seven this season. Very much looking like a championship player. That's the notes out of the way. Boys, what are we expecting this weekend? Well, I mean, I remember we bumped... Bumped into him, didn't we? Uh, come back from Sheffield, oh, United yeah. away. Whitby had a few... Um, who's that one with long hair? I think it was Curtis, wasn't it? Or was that their centre back? Burgess, wasn't it? Burgess. Burgess. Curtis Burgess, that was the one, wasn't it? Chris. I don't know, he's irrelevant. Yeah, he's irrelevant. We don't know who he is. Like, but like Whitby had a <laughs> Whitby had a like 
a, a verbal argument with a Portsmouth player <laughs> <laughs> after they played Sunderland last who season. Thunk, yeah. who, who would have thunk Whitby getting in a verbal argument with anyone no. or on a Twitter? Like, who would have thought it? No, who would have thought it? Yeah. Right. First Samuel Downs, now this. <laughs> right, so... <laughs> Look, <laughs> basically, we were in some. We were eating our KFC as we usually do after a match. You might find us in any any KFC in the country um, after a football match. No, but no more homeless people, please. I don't want Peterborough. Uh, Peterborough well, Peter, was just a random homeless man. Like, okay, obviously it's a tough time of the year, but yeah, he was looking for our bags, wasn't don't, he? Don't get between me and my bonus banquet, please. Yeah, it was ironic after we played commentary on Sunday, though, weren't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go back to this. Um, Tom, we were in this, this, I don't know where we were. We were in Manchester or something. Where, where, where yeah, were we? No, Sheffield, yeah. Yeah, we just come back from Sheffield, didn't we? I can't remember. We just got beaten by Sheffield, didn't we? I have no idea. Oh, Look, we could have been in Manchester. Um, we were sitting in this service station and then all of a sudden Kenny Jacket walks in. I remember, I was like, that's Kenny Jacket. And they were like, nah, nah, that's not. No, he weren't. He was yeah. in his bloody full tracks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and he was like, no, definitely not. <laughs> and then... I don't, uh, 20 minutes went past and they were getting their old vegan kind of shakes in or whatever weren't it Fred Manessa we saw him out by the coach yeah and Whitby pi- had to pipe up didn't he you went for a picture with Kenny Jack at first I remember yeah. then after How that, that so yeah that's so Tim Pot for a and start then, um, well, I told him I'd see him this season <laughs> and then and, well, I told yeah him. go on he was like oh yeah see you next season mate and he was like yeah don't think so yeah don't think so mate he said didn't he yeah. <laughs> so confident but yeah, we are going to see him this weekend. And um, Mike, I know you've got family down there, mate. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, yeah, lived there for 20 years. Yeah. I know what Pompey fans are like. Very Fickle. Uh, Diehard. Die Follow him, but... Did they lose I, fans I when, they, when, when they dropped? Did they lose fans? Do you know? No. I mean, they've, st- they they've got their crowd back, haven't they? Through thick and thin, the yeah. Portsmouth. The, 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 they are just solid at the end of the day. Mm. It's they are, at the moment they're not happy, yeah. right? Because let's face it, ten years ago they were winning the FA Cup, right? In the, in the Premier League, so they're not happy. They've been through the mill, and I, I don't think Kenny's until they get rid of Kenny. I don't think that they're going to progress any further. I think he's taken them as far as he can, really. They're, they're just. I expect him to lose this weekend. Against Ipswich, yeah. Ellis, <laughs> Ellis, Ellis Harris is bound to score, but yeah. to be fair, uh, this is going to be clipped if he absolutely batters us. But um, out of the two, I think we kept the right one. <laughs> we kept the right one. And who was that? It, Jackson. Yeah. Who asked him? I really do hope we kept the one uh, right one. Yeah, Brad, what do you think? think? Do you agree I with that? Agree. What uh, Jackson and Harrison? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that hindsight's a, a, a wonderful thing, as they say. But at the start of the season, I, or. I didn't want us to get rid of Harrison. I didn't no, think he'd had a, 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 fair a, fair, a fair crack, a mm. fair chance. But, um, yeah, it looks like they, they got that one right so far. Well, let, let's just put it to the to the statistics. He's played more games. Neither of them, they're both level. And I can say now that Harrison scored less goals than Jackson this season and in the league. And assists. Assists. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's an underrated part of Jackson's yeah. Jackson game. made an He's absolutely wonderful Norwood, pass on that's Saturday to Norwood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I said this early, Whippy, you missed it, but I said this to Brad earlier. He's like, it wouldn't be out of place in the Premier League. I mean, if you saw that pass, you'd be like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Norwood's goal, it's Jackson Wimbledon again. Well, Wimbledon Jackson set up most of Norwood's goal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, we've got some I mean, two quality strikers yeah, there. You obviously don't really understand football if you don't really rate Jackson. I don't, you know, there's such <laughs> <laughs> he's really got a good line as well. Yeah, he? he's never offside or anything. I know a ginger guy is going to be receiving with that response there. Carrot Sweet Mash. Yeah, Carrot and Sweet Mash this weekend. But, um, boys, Pompey's chances of reaching the playoffs, I'm being realistic here, they're not yeah. going to go for automatic this season. Um, Pompey's chances of reaching the playoffs, are they a really realistic candidate? I don't see it. I don't think they've got the strength in, like they did last year. Yeah. What they sold Clark on it to Brighton and that. Defensively, lost uh, Jamal Lowe, we, sold, uh, we sold Clark to Portsmouth, and that was probably one of the worst things we ever did. It was, well, a lot of lot of decisions have gone badly, haven't they, for us really? But I'm surprised we actually got them uh, clauses in, which were good. It's um, not, just quickly, is there something that I just want to bring up? We don't really usually bring it up, but the amount of players that we've let go have become prolific in Championship, maybe Premier League. Sure. We'll come on to Webster as a letter, but the oh, the whole point. Clark would have been better than Webster. We, you played with Clark, didn't you? you, you and and you played oh, football with him. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't 
don't think it's for me. It's not. It's never the club. The, let's talk about. It's, 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 no, it's no, McCarthy. It's right, McCarthy. Let's talk about Rhodes. Let's talk about Marriott. Let's oh. talk about Clark. Yeah, we're gonna be here all night, aren't we? Um, um, yeah, we could be here all night, mate. But they're they're quality players. We let go. Um, we're not doing that now, though. That's one thing we can't let go. Look at the amount of players yeah, who have gone on from McCarthy yeah. to you know McGoldrick, criminally underutilized by McCarthy. Yeah. Now Premier League star, yes, not scored, but it's not impressed. Not just us though. It's not yeah. just us doing this. No. Uh, Webster's now Premier League player. I know McCarthy did rate him, but I didn't rate him personally. How much was I didn't like him. Oh, how much? Yeah. How much was the value there? You know, Marriott. Marriott's he's got, another he's got one. Value because he's because of his English pre- pedigree, age, um, height, uh, distribution. Great player in that, in that sense. Moving on to the Europa League with yeah, yeah, and <laughs> I mean Knudsen is not a Europa, Europa League player, is he? For <laughs> I no. Think no. Really no. I don't know how we've let so many. Uh, one that annoys me is Conor Hurahane. Yeah. We had him, yeah. and he would have been. I d- we, our midfield would have been set for years, and we let. Mm. So Fair King got him in, and I don't know where he went after that. I think he it was Plymouth, Plymouth after us. He, he, he came in t- to us, and we were like, yeah. And then he just. Oh, he's gone. He's, uh, a bit like Paddy stories. Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> Paddy Kenny. Yeah, Another Paddy one we let go. Uh, <laughs> Where does that leave us, boys? Saturday. I just want to. Uh, are we confident to get a win? I just want a I yes or no if answer. We, if we, that's not yes or no. <laughs> I think if we go out there and we get a really good win, like we hammer them or something like that, four, three or four, maybe five, yeah, whatever. Beat you, beat you I know it's. Home. I know it sounds like realms of the. Lose, lose the but if we was no, to do that, I think Kenny's job would be on the line. Win. I think he might be out. Mm. I think we might see Kenny get his jacket. Well, maybe. <laughs> Have you got any friends from Ports of Mike? Yes, Are they going to the game on? Yeah. Get them on the channel, mate. We'll have a word of them. <laughs> All right. Um, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to leave it there. Stop saying that word, please. They're all undertakers, you know that. Right? <laughs> no, no undertakers. All right. <laughs> um, we're gonna have to leave it there, boys. I want to thanks firstly Mike for coming coming down tonight. It's travelled a long way. Yeah, you know, great photographer, mate. Thank you for coming as always, Brad. Corey Day's artwork, quality work there, mate. Definitely, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna talk to you about some little stuff that I want want you to do for us as well. Tom, thanks for showing up, mate. <laughs> Dan, thanks for coming out of your armchair, mate, to get down here tonight. Mark, as always, you're always here. And Andy, how did how did you get down here tonight, mate? Just drive, mate. Uh, Ipswich buses. Ipswich buses. No. And make sure you use Ipswich buses down to get yeah three pound fifty on a match day. But guys, look, it's Christmas time. So there's no need to be afraid. Uh, we're going to go and get three points on Saturday. Make sure you subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. But until next time, come on, you blaze.